Welcome back to the mailbag. My name is Ian Miller. Today we are going to address the question of is the Shimoda Action X70 an ideal backpack for carry on travel? International airline regulations average around 55 centimeters to 60 centimeters for vertical height, which means that our X70 is 59 centimeters. So for some of those airlines you're going to have issues with, always check with your specific airline that you're flying on then verify whether your bag's gonna fit. Many of those airlines do not strictly enforce those rules, but again, check the regulations. It's your decision whether you wanna take that risk or not. A lot of time, airline regulations are gonna be reflective of your personal travel paths. For instance, once in a while I'll go to Europe, but I don't really go very often, so I don't have to deal with as strict airline regulations. Most of my travel is within Asia and to North America. I have never had my pack rejected with my Shimoda packs or any other packs I've used in the past. I could just be very lucky, but I also believe that there is a way to behave and a way to travel with your bag so it doesn't draw attention and it just ensures that you have a greater chance of getting on board even though your pack might be taller. So I'm going to talk about my last trip to Canada. I'm going to run through a few photos and the first one is this picture right here which is my X70 and on this particular day I was shooting with Scott Surface. We didn't have to hike or do anything like that so I removed the belt. Now the key of removing the belt is that a, it makes the bag less cumbersome, but also in a travel scenario, remove the belt, your bag will look smaller. With the X70, it won't give off the impression of a big hiking bag. Remove the belt, put the bag in your check-in luggage, or stuff it inside the backpack. In this image, we are up at uh, Black Tusk Mountain, camping there overnight. You can see that the pack doesn't really look that big. The reason I'm showing you this is because my tent and all the other gear was back at camp. And as a result, the bag doesn't really look that big. And you can get away with that when you're traveling. Just keep the bag looking small. So I'm gonna show you another angle here. And that's the side portfolio. Now keep in mind that I have a large DSLR core unit in there. Uh, I might have some other stuff packing the bag out. I can't really remember what was actually in there. Otherwise, the bag compresses down quite a bit, which is key when you're packing your bag. You don't want your bag to look too big. Now, here's an image that I shot up at Miller's Ridge in Pemberton, British Columbia. It's a selfie. And you can see that the side pockets of the X70 are packed pretty full. So this was at a day when Mia Mason uh, took bikes up to uh, this cabin. And I still had my tent, I still had uh, poles, all that stuff uh, loaded up in the side with water and all those kind of overnight supplies. So the bag's definitely looking big here. Now you see the side pockets. I would not travel with the side pockets packed like this. This is only something to do when I'm there. So keep that in mind. Always make the bag look small. So this is a picture of Gabe Langlois. He's based out of Pemberton and this is shot out in the, an area called Birkenhead. Uh, he packed his red camera that day and you can see that it's a nice relatively small looking backpack considering the gear he's carrying. So I just wanted to give you some more visuals of the bag in use so you can get an idea of the range of the X70 because if you can get it onto the plane, keep it, you can keep it looking small but then you can really pack it out as I'm going to show you in these next images. So I overstuffed the bag here just for the visual uh, effect. And you could definitely hike with the bag packed like this. That's what it's designed to do is to be able to extend. But you can also see in this picture that I have a two liter water bottle in the side pocket. That's just to give you a perspective on how big those pockets are and how much you can actually carry in them. And the reason I'm doing this is because when you travel with a relatively small bag, it's just great that when you actually get to the location you're going to, you have the potential to turn a relatively small package into something a lot more significant in size ideal for camping or just missions where you need a lot of gear. So in this shot, you can see what I'm actually bringing onto the plane. I've already gone through immigration at this point. So I'll have all my critical camera gear and my hard drives. I will have uh, probably a couple books and then I've got a tripod. Pretty much everything else that I don't need, uh, I'll just, I'll put that in check in. So the other trick that I always do other than removing the belt is when I am checking in, I put the bag on one shoulder and even if it is heavy, I'll just suck it up and pretend it's not heavy. The more casual I keep the pack, the less it looks like a big bag or a heavy pack. This with the no belt really lends to the idea that I've got a lightweight backpack on. 
Now, of course, many of the overhead cabin sizes are different. You can see in this one, which was an, on Air Canada, I don't know the exact uh, airplane model, you can see it fits basically perfectly in here. That's not gonna be the case on every plane. Sometimes you're gonna have to turn it sideways if you can do that. Technically, the X70 is going to be over uh, height on many international airline flights, but I've personally traveled with it. Others have traveled with it. Really something that's up to you. If you want to be 100% safe and secure in your head that you're getting on that plane with your gear, which I completely understand you do, by all means, you know, shop for a smaller bag. In my opinion, at least, there's a lot of flexibility with what you can get on and what you can't. And I understand that different airlines have different strictness. Everyone's had different experiences. It's, a, it's not a black and white issue. There's a lot of, of tolerance on what airlines will accept. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna ask me, is, is this gonna fit on the airplane? I can't really answer that because all you can do is check the airline you're traveling versus the height of the bag. Hey everyone, just a quick message. If you like the kind of content you're seeing on our channel, please feel free to subscribe. And if you can't find it on our channel, send me an email, ian at shimodadesigns.com and I'll do my best to either answer your question via video or I will answer just directly by email. We'll see you next time.